Okay, this video is called, Is It Really Just the Food? And this uh, speaker here is, oh, this picture here is Clapper, Dr. Clapper. Some people call him Clapper. You know, he's a bright guy. He's made some good lectures. Um, I disagree with him about recommending omega-3. I think that's a mistake. But, um, you know, I've learned a lot from the guy. And he had a good lecture about leaky gut. He's got other good lectures. Um, so anyways... But here's you got the big sign. It's the food. It's been the food all along. Yeah, I think food is the most important thing. But I also think it's a mistake to only pay attention to food. There's a whole bunch of other problems to be aware of. You know, there's a big category of estrogenic chemicals. The population is being saturated in estrogenic chemicals. And I don't think it's an accident. I think that it's a way to make the, the to feminize the population, make them kind of, you know, weaker, easier to control. Um, I also think this is part of the gender confusion of young people. They're, they're not exposed to a little bit of estrogenic chemicals. They're exposed to tons of estrogenic chemicals. Estrogenic chemicals in the baby formula. Estrogenic chemicals in the soap, in the shampoo, um, in all the personal care products, um, in the tap water. Okay, You don't remove these things unless you've got a carbon water filter. Plus there's even non-organic, um, well non-carbon based um, estrogenic chemicals. Aluminum is a metalloestrogen, for example. Some other metals can have an estrogen-like effect. So the smart move is avoid them as much as you can, but you need to know a little bit about them. It's actually very simple to learn about estrogenic chemistry. Um, I've given a whole bunch of lectures on the subject. It's easy to learn. It's easy to avoid. You don't need deodorant, for example. You have to stop being a brainwashed chump. You know, the average low IQ person is a brainwashed chump. They just do whatever their society does. Everybody puts the order in, so they do it. You know, it's a typical lazy, stupid thing to do. When we say hi to each other, we say hi. We don't sniff each other's armpits. You don't need to be putting aluminum in your armpit. You know, with shared lymphatics between the breast and the armpit, increasing your risk of breast cancer every day. Um, and all the all the personal care products, almost every single one of them has a um some type of estrogenic preservative. Um, other toxins in the tap water. There's a whole bunch of other ones. You need it the very bare minimum as a carbon water filter. Um, they put aluminum in lots of things. They put it in cheese, some of the cheeses, because it makes them harder, more easy to cut, like you know, a stiff cheddar cheese, for example. It's in some of the salts as an anti-caking agent. Um, it's, it's sprayed into the air in this form right here. Um, let's see. HG, you know, um, is a common contaminant with high fructose corn syrup because it's pushed through a chloralkali vat and uh, there's often mercury contaminants with that. I realize there's other ways to make it nowadays, but it's not, not always used. Um, excess iron in so-called enriched grains, that's a bad idea in cereals, but some people are getting quite iron overloaded because of that, also because they eat meat. And I, I gave entire lectures, series of lectures on the side effects of being iron overloaded. They're bad. Um, high flat plant foods, well, that's a plant somebody that snuck in there. Caffeine. It's a toxic thing. You don't want it. It's not good. You think it's good. It's, you know, if you're worried you're going to fall asleep, yeah, you want it. But you don't want caffeine in general. It's a bad thing. MSG, MFG, they're neurotoxic. Aspartame, neurotoxic. MJ, for some reason, MJ is making a comeback. So whenever you see something being advertised to the general public, you should always consider it probably a way to chump you at first. You know, when now there's all this stuff about CBD and MJ being good. I can tell you this, I don't think I've ever seen an intelligent person or a person, I wouldn't say intelligent person, i say a well-informed person trying to recommend MJ, okay? You know, I have friends who are neurologists. We look at people with brain damage every day, and I can tell you, MJ is a major contributor to brain damage. You want to stay away from it. Think about the kids at your high school or college that were heavily into it. I, I've never seen anybody into that stuff who, who did well cognitively long-term. It's a bad habit. You don't want it. Um, I, I had several lectures on it, you know, psychotic breakdowns, schizophrenic episodes, contaminations with uh, paraquat, contaminations with uh, PCP, etc. It's a bad idea. Okay, then there's a lot of processing chemicals for food, like hexane. That's a neurotoxin. A lot of these preservatives are neurotoxic or they're circa inhibitors, these food dyes. Some of them are neurotoxic. Some of them are carcinogenic. Uh, they ain't going to improve cognitive function. There were some good reasons for the, the old Feingold diet for hyperactive kids. Um, excessive psychological stress, which can be caused by more things than one. It's not just interpersonal relationships. It's also excessive loud noises. It can also be excessive, you know, a bunch of other things. All right. Um, you need to get your exercise, your sleep. You know, whether or not you have a curious personality and wants to learn versus just sort of being lazy and ignorant through your life, that makes a big difference in the long run. Lots of kids uh, get brain damage 
in the junior high and high school years from playing all these head trauma sports like soccer and boxing, MMA, football, lacrosse, hockey. So, you know, a little bit you can probably recover from it, recover from it pretty well, but I've seen kids have to drop out of college because uh, of head trauma from soccer. They just couldn't no longer function adequately in a cognitive way. Uh, there's MRI studies about brain damage uh, in soccer players. And there's also things like EMF, just from your phone and your Wi-Fi. You know, holding that phone to the side of your head all day, and it's not going to increase your cognitive function. There's some people claiming that it even has a mild excitotoxin effect on the brain. There's others claiming that it causes increased release of HG vapor from dental amalgams. Okay, you're putting it in your front pocket. Are you increasing your risk of uh, coronary artery disease? Are you increasing your risk of uh, breast cancer? You put it in your front pocket. You're increasing your risk. You're microwaving your gonads. You're going to lower your testosterone production. Um, you put it in your back pocket. Are you going to potentially increase your risk of re rectal cancer? I'm not sure we know the answer to that, but I think there's good reason to be worried about it, and I would not carry it on your body. Um, so anyways, the point I'm saying is, yes, the food is the most important thing, but toxicology is a major contributor and there's other forms of toxicology like this EMF electric type stuff than the physical trauma. So to optimize your health and optimize the health of your family, it's good to know about all this stuff. So I think that um, it's just good to be aware all this stuff is out there. And it's all pretty straightforward to learn. I got lectures, I think, on all of this stuff. And that's one of the things, you know, I'm trying to help you guys. I'm trying to save the pearls. And by sharing with you all these little nuances, as soon as you make up your mind, I want to learn about these things, it becomes pretty easy. And all you got to do is uh, watch a video while you eat dinner every night. You do that on a routine basis, you'll be more knowledgeable than, you know, 99% of doctors within less than a year.